Every Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Desert Evangelism, the road less traveled. Hallelujah. It's always mm-hmm. a joy to be in the presence of God, to study his word, and to show ourselves approved unto him as well. Hallelujah. That's why today we have gathered here on Desert Evangelism, the road less traveled, brought to you by Christ Redeemer Church, Etobico, Toronto. We are here once again. I joined by our father and our brother Isaac Yedu, who is with us uh, on Desert Evangelism. Uh, mm-hmm that uh is come to your ways uh 11 a.m every eastern uh, eastern time on uh on our facebook page and our youtube page as well hallelujah and uh mm-hmm. it's always a joy it's always a joy that we come together as brethren to study to show ourselves improved it is very important for us to study the word of god it's very important for us to look into the 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 the, the, the scriptures for us to find what god is telling us every day and every noun and Every time that we, we we wake up from our bed with life in us, it is always important to look at the uh, the book of the law that God through His Holy Spirit has written upon our hearts that we may find His dealings with us on our daily basis and as a whole in our lives what He has for us. That is why through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by the uh, through our Father, this platform has been created for us to reach out to all those on every works of life, uh, bringing you the gospel. That is the Great Commission. Uh, that God gave unto us to go into all the words and make disciples of all nations uh, and bring everyone uh, the gospel of the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior who came to die on the cross to liberate us from our, our sinful ways and bringing us back into the victorious life of God Jesus. So that is why we've paved this way for us to bring you desert evangelism in a road less traveled. Hallelujah. It's, we are always here at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern time. Let's take note of that because of the time difference in our, our various parts of uh, the nations that we find ourselves or countries that we find ourselves in is very important for us to know it's 11 a.m eastern time and I, I encourage you not to miss it you are not here by mistake you have been led by the spirit of god to come and join us together in one accord for us to fellowship as the apostles of old did in one accord in the upper room this is our upper room time for us to spend time with the word and with prayer as well and as we all know we cannot begin without uh acknowledge the presence of the holy spirit in our midst so it's very important for us to always acknowledge him for him to direct our path even though we are steady he says commit our thoughts to him and he will establish it so this moment i want you in a few moments in one accord and in one mind and one soul let us begin to just worship the name of the lord most high let us begin to give thanks unto him let us begin to acknowledge his holy name let us begin to give reverence unto him for it is he that makes us both to will and to do it is he that gives us the ability to even to sit uh in, uh, in the comfort of our home this moment to bring the word of god Listen, just begin to thank god just begin to thank him for his goodness thank you for his mercy thank you for his ability for you be able to sit under his the privilege as you know many are those that yet to hear the word of God many are those that yet to be at his feet to study of him but I cannot they could not be privileged but you and I have been privileged you know not just as you know my father let's thank God let's thank God let's thank God let's worship him his holy name father thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercy for your kindness we thank you for your faithfulness thank you for all that you have done we thank you God for your love that is shed abroad in our hearts by your spirit they are given to us the spirit of truth that has come to you and to us all the time to your mouth that can flow to father for the privilege that we can speak of your word in boldness and in authority Heavenly Father, oh, to those that are lost, those that yet know you, those that yet to hear of you, those that are 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 yet to hear of you
we thank you for your assistance as well. You are at the sound of our voice, dear Lord. Of him, more of we heard and the one to hear, and less of us is found out. Let me be out there this morning, oh God. Your people, oh God, they come under your authority and under your influence this morning, and your will will be done in their lives. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father in heaven, for making this day available. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We thank you, Jesus, for what you have done and what you are about to do in our lives this morning. We are forever be glorified and exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 God bless you for joining us. It's Desert Evangelism, the road less traveled, brought to you by Christ Redeemer Church at Tobico, Toronto. Hallelujah. Today we are here with the part of the house, Pastor Eric Amwa, our senior pastor of Christ, uh, uh, Christ Redeemer Church at Tobico, Toronto, and our brother Isaac Yedo and myself, Emmanuel Anno. I'm here with you on Desert Evangelism. And I, 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 today is going to be another interesting time on Desert Evangelism. It's going to be another hour uh, with uh, the Word of God. God explained and taught to us by the leadership of the Holy Spirit through our Father. On, uh, on, so we are still tackling the grace of God, understanding the grace, the basis of the grace of God for our lives. Hallelujah! And last week we touched a lot of it. Um, and two weeks ago we had our part one. Last week we had a part two. Today is going to be the part three, and we are looking forward to uh, studying on the de deserving and the unfaithful people in the Bible, hallelujah, that's where we come to see that I said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The reason why we have all sinned and both the Jew and both the Gentile, hallelujah, as our father takes us through this year. So I, I encourage you to buckle your seatbelt and uh, get your pens, your notebooks and your Bibles as well. It's very important. They play a crucial role in our studies, hallelujah. It is very important for us to lay emphasis on the scriptures and for us to have our pens and our notebooks as well so that we can write something down. And when it is done and we go back, we study to show ourselves approved, hallelujah. So on this platform, at this moment, I hand over to our father, Pastor Eric Amma. Pastor, if you can hear me, can you take over? Hey, Brother Isaac and uh, uh, Brother Ima, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope the, uh, the, fam the family is all doing good. Uh, today I yeah. see that the, the, the snow is out there again. I thought it was over. But, <laughs> <laughs> God, God has his own way of doing things. I just looked oh, at yeah. the window and I can't <laughs> believe that I saw the snow coming out down again. I go, oh, oh, there it goes again. Oh, and boy. Yeah, we thank God. We thank God, God for all that. We are all good. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Anyway, today, 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 we, we, we just we just want to continue on uh, what we've been doing. For, for, uh, understanding the basis for the grace of God. Understand what grace really means. You know, mm -hmm. we know that people have been throwing the word grace left, right, and center mm -hmm. and doing all kinds of to understand it from the biblical side of it and how what the spirit of God reveals to us by saying talking about the grace, by the grace. And you know, where we are now. Very, in my opinion, and the world times what it really about. I don't ask it that. Why was they the need? Why was they the need at all? Why was they the need for the grace of God? Mm. There has to be a need. That's why God, God, God. I mean, uh, brought this about. And when mm -hmm. we talked about uh, our scripture verse in uh, Ephesians chapter number two and verse number eight, we we saw what Paul was trying to. I mean, tell the church in Ephesus about the basis of God's, I mean, uh, grace to them, and then how it came about, and then what it really meant. I mean, last week we took apart, I mean, we tried to unpack what was in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8. There. So it is very important that, that, that people understand this, that first of all, a statement has to be made. And the statement that has to be made is that Paul is looking in the, in the lens of God and looking around and seeing what God sees in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, when we read uh, in, uh, Romans chapter number one or the book of Romans, it, 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 I mean, uh, I'd like to uh, invite our friends who have not really studied Romans 
and mm-hmm. ask them to go back and just do it and allow the Holy Spirit to teach them, especially in the first three chapters. If 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 they are able to unpack what Paul is really trying to say there, mm-hmm. basically it is a setting of God's I mean a judgment room or just court God's uh courthouse in heaven. Mm-hmm. And the and and the time at the time what Paul is saying then is that you know uh in God's eyes the whole world has been indicted the whole world has been indicted before because of sin we have been judged and found wanting and mm-hmm. the, 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 the 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 sentences the sentence or the judgment was death the reason why the world was is still standing or was still standing at the time is that it's just like some some a, a, a murderer who has been condemned to death and is sitting in the in the what they call the uh, the condemned cells or mm. uh, the, the 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 jail, you know where they are awaiting the execution, and that is mm. the state that the world finds themselves in. And at, it is at this state that God, through the Apostle Paul, is trying to tell the the, the, the church in Rome in, in Rome that. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has a I mean, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. God, out of his own heart and out of his own love, has gone out to... And short, uh, falling short of, uh, of the group. so it is. It is. It is only by understanding. I think. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just lost uh, over there. Uh, it's not. Small technical difficulties here and there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I believe due to the weather. Hallelujah. So uh, as we wait upon him um, to 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 get all done and all fixed up, um, I believe. He, oh, he's back. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. My the network here is unstable. Pardon me. So no also what, what, what I'm saying is that Paul Paul is trying to let the world know. That the, the world stands judged and is just waiting for sentence. But we can only understand the grace of God when we understand our situation. Mm. People can only accept the grace of God when they have when, when, when they have accepted the situation that they are in. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, at the time that Paul was writing to the church. And then telling them that by the grace of God that they are alive and everything, and that mm-hmm. uh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There are basically two 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 groups of people in the world at that time. In the mm-hmm. biblical times, there was a letter about two groups of people. There were the Jews and then the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. There were the Jews and then the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles were in 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 this group of the Gentiles. We're also two two groups. We have the the, the Gentiles who were the, the, the barbarians, and then we have the wise people. Okay, to understand this, uh, 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 brother Emmanuel, can you read? I mean, uh, Romans chapter number one and uh, verse number. Can you read uh, uh, verse number twelve to uh, fifteen for me? Romans, Romans chapter 1, verse, verse number 12 to 15. Can you read for me, please? Now, you are, your back is mute. It's Wait. muted. Sorry. <laughs> Romans chapter okay. 1, 12 to 15. Mm. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith. 
but I also want to be encouraged by yours. I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I wanted to work among you and see spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles. For I have a great sense of obligation to people in both civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and uneducated alike. 15. So I am eager to come to you in Rome, in Rome too, to preach the good news. Amen. Amen. You see, I, I'm reading from, I mean, the, the King James Version. I like mm -hmm. to stress on our, remember that we are talking about the basis of God's grace. Mm -hmm. That in, in, in verse number 14, he says that I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both mm -hmm. to the wise and to the unwise. Mm -hmm. this, this sentence there carries a lot. That's why I said that in the, in the biblical times, in those days, when Paul was writing, there, there were these two groups of people. When he talks about the Jews, the Jews of one side, but now he's addressing the, the Greeks and the barbarians. The Greeks were, 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 were thought of as the, the wise people, the learned people. Okay, So the, the book long, the, 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 the wise people. And mm -hmm. the barbarians were, were, were thought of to be those people with the brute force, like the Romans, and then those who were uneducated. Like those coming from uh, the Africa or the the, the, the deep I mean uh, uh, places of the world that I mean civilization hasn't I mean caught up to yet. So he said that he has an obligation that this truth, the basis for God's grace, the basis for God's grace, has to be understood, has to come to everybody. Everybody should understand and should know this. Whether you are a wise person. Or whether you are a barbarian, you know. Mm -hmm. So we find that in this, in this, in the, in the world, uh, like I said, we have two categories of people at a time, so to speak. You know, we have the, the undeserving people. I call them the undeserving people. The undeserving people are what Paul refers to as the Greeks and the barbarians. Mm -hmm. And then we have the unfaithful people. The unfaithful people I I I I, I put under the under the the the, the Jews. Okay, so basically in the world there were two people. This is the basic. Remember that we are talking about the basis, the basis for God's, I mean, uh, mm. uh, grace, mm. which means that why did why was it necessary at all? Why was why was grace necessary? It was necessary, as Paul said, tells us, because the whole world has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. And besides, we are two 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 groups of people. We have the undeserving people. Now, the undeserving people, according to uh, the scriptures, uh, if Isaac, you could turn to Colossians chapter number 2, verse 13 and 14. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 and, and 14. 14. And I read from the NIV version. Say, so when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Having cancelled the written code with its regulation that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Amen. 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 Here, Paul, speaking to the church in, 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 in Colossae, is telling them that they should remember that there was a time, this is the basis for the, the God's, God's grace for them, that there was, there was a law written against them. There was, there was sin hindrances. There were things that prevented them to enjoy the things of God. Look, in those days, the people who were supposed to enjoy God's grace, God's goodness, and God's abundance was the Jews. The mm. people, the descendants of Abraham, who mm. God has promised and has sworn an oath and the covenant with them, mm -hmm. that all the good things will be for them. Mm -hmm. So you see, 
Well, somebody might say, well, God, 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 God has separated the world and chosen his, his people and then left the, 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 I mean, uh, the other half. Mm. Of course, you may be right to say that, but then God in, in his own wisdom was working out a plan of, of salvation. He was working mm. out a plan whereby he was going to make available everything that he had to the whole world. To begin yeah. with, there was law that was against the people, the other people, the, call them the, the non-Jews, the non-Jews, the, 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 the non-descendants of Abraham. There was laws that was written against them, the things that said that they could not enjoy the things of God. Remember that God specifically even told, told them that, told the children of Israel that the, the children of Moab were not welcome in the assembly of the children of God. The Moabites were not welcome in the assembly of the Jews, in the assembly of the house of God. They were excluded. That was the situation then. You know, for, 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 for somebody who, who, who aspired to have the goodness of God and all the benefits of God, they had to be, I mean, ritually assimilated to, be, to the Israelites, to be a Jew. Before they could, I mean, I mean, uh, like enjoy the benefits of God, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was this ritual assimilation where people converted from wherever they were, their culture, and then assimilated, went through all this, I mean, uh, uh, ritual assimilation to become Jews or, 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 or Israelites. They would, they, some of the assimilation would be some form of baptism, ritual baptism. And they will be, I mean, uh, circumcised. You know, that, is, that was all because they did all this because they wanted to be Israelites. They wanted to be Hebrews. They wanted to be Jews. They wanted to have, to enjoy the covenant that God had with these special people. Mm. You know, remember again, we are talking about the basis for the grace of God. When you look around these people, you and I, our descendants far, far behind, were not permitted to be in the, in the assembly of the people of God, which is the, 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 the Israelites. For us to be even partakers of them, we have to be ritually assimilated. If we take a quick look at Exodus chapter 40, chapter 12, and verse number 48, let's, let's take a quick look at Exodus. And this is God instructing all these things. Exodus 12, verse 48. number 48 and uh, 49. Exodus God 12, is giving 49. an instruction about the Passover to the people of Israel. And he's saying here, he says that, and when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as a native of the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. One law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you. Now, I want you to take a particular note of, of this here. This is God instructing, and verse number 49 he says that. There shall be two laws. One law will be for the native born, who's the, who's the, the, the Jew or the, the Hebrew, and the other for the stranger who dwells in the house. So that even over, given the picture of salvation, then the picture of salvation. When Israel was liberated from, from captivity, mm -hmm. the Passover was a symbol. They were not even qualified to enjoy that. If they were so if they if they wanted to enjoy it, then they have to be ritually assimilated. They have to be circumcised. They have to go through rituals. Mm. This is the next one. In uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 
and verse 1 and 3, we find that even after the temple has been built and then the walls of Jerusalem have been, has been uh, erected, on the time of consecration, Nehemiah reminded the people that they were not supposed to intermarry, make, bring, go about, I mean, involving themselves with the people, the pagans or the, 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 the non-circumcised people. Mm -hmm. These were all signs of the world against the children of uh, uh, Abraham. Mm -hmm. There were two, the two, the two people. We were not qualified. So we, we were undeserving. We were undeserving. So it, it was like, you were already condemned to die. Mm -hmm. You were already condemned. So it, it has to take something. There has to be something that God was planning to do. Mm. These were the uncircumcised people. I don't know whether, Brother Isaac, I mean, I mean you, are, you, are, you, are, you are getting where, where, where we are driving at. How, how people <laughs> born of the same, created by the same God, mm -hmm. at a point of time, yeah. when he chooses one people and then yeah. says that the other people cannot be part of them. Yeah. All because if we, we don't understand, we have never understood his plan, we are undeserving. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, just jump in here. If, 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 if you have something else to add up before, maybe maybe we, we, we follow up, you know, and, and go to the, the unfaithful people. Because, you see, people have to understand mm -hmm. where they are coming from. From, yeah. And I, and Why I do, God is giving them this privilege mm -hmm, of peace. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that's one, one thing that when it comes to evangelism, um, we have come to learn that we don't only tell people that God loves them, but we, we, we need to let them know that, that they are positioned with God. Because as we as you were describing um, the state of the undeserving, when we read Romans chapter fifteen, as the Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul let us see that in verse four he says, "For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us." so that through endurance and the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. And so even as by the grace of God, you are giving us this picture of ourself, our past self, as it used to be for us who are now in Christ. This bring the understanding, as we are talking about understanding, it help us to appreciate what Jesus Christ has come to attain for us. Mm -hmm. Because if we didn't know this through scriptures, then we may be tempted. And even most of the time, we are tempted to take things for granted, to take salvation for granted. But here is the case. We are being, you know, um, our eyes are being opened to who we were and the state we were before Jesus Christ came in so that we can be partakers of the grace of God. And therefore, um, it, as I said, it, it humbles you when we, we come to know these things about the grace of God and the great love of God for, for, for his people. Amen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Emmanuel, you want, to, you, want, you want to jump in there or say something? Oh, no, no. I was commenting on him and what Brother Isaac said. I think your line cut off. Yeah. Okay, okay. A picture of God's love. You're trying to let the people know also about God's love for them, the church in Rome how God loved them, both the, the barbarian or the Greek and, and, and then the, the, the Jews alike. You mm -hmm. know, how, how God's love extends to all of them. You know, 
the people who were undeserving, the people who had to be circumcised before. But now, through Christ, they are, they are able to sit under the same roof, under the mm -hmm. same seats, you know, close mm -hmm. to each other. And then, and then partake, break the bread together. What a, what, 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 uh, what a sign of God bringing these two people together. Mm -hmm. There was a time that they, they, I mean, the Jew would not sit on the same seat or drink of the same cup. Yeah, that that the Gentile drank, but now you look around and then you see that the cup is being passed around. The cup mm -hmm. of the of, of, of the of, of the fruit of the olive of the of the vine is passed around, and everybody is taking a sip of it. What a great picture of God! You see, because God went out of His way. God realized. You see, we are going to be going back always to Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. And uh, but mm -hmm. stay there because that's where yeah. we are drawing all our inferences from, right? Yeah. God working on the heart of people, mm -hmm. you know, so that they will believe, you know, mm -hmm. they will believe unto what righteousness, they will right. believe unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is a prerequisite for salvation. Mm -hmm. And then in 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 in, in, a, in that condition, there was no way that man undeserving will be righteous before that is standing they can mm -hmm. they can never be in right standing to i mean to to i mean uh a way his love the love of god was what was was, was, was reaching the, the drug addict you know, was reaching the, I mean, I mean the, the mentally ill person, you know, the, 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 the inexperience, the love of God was going through. Mm -hmm. when, we were, when we were yet sinners, yeah. the love of God found us mm -hmm. and made our heart respond, you know. He made our heart to respond to him yeah. so that we could be saved. The, un, the, 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 the undeserved. Then there's the other half of it, the, the unfaithful people. Mm -hmm. The unfaithful people I call to be the Jews. The mm -hmm. Jews who had it all and yet they were unfaithful. Mm -hmm. Paul is addressing them to. They had the promise. The promise given to Abraham was for them. Yeah. The promise through Isaac was from them, was for them. Mm -hmm. The promise through Jacob was for them. The promise through David was for them. Mm -hmm. They had all the promises of God. They have the covenant of God. God had covenanted with himself. That he will never leave them nor forsake them. That he will never abandon them. Mm. And then they realize that, yeah, yeah, right? So they could do everything that they wanted. The book of Judges speaks about mm. that. Mm -hmm. That because they were like spoiled children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they knew that their father will always come and rescue them. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. they, they, they will go about and then do whatever they want. And then at the end, they start crying. Oh, mm. God, oh God, you did this for us, you did this for us. And then God will give them, uh, I mean, a, 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 a deliverer. Mm. God will give them a deliverer. And then they will deliver them. Only mm -hmm. when they are free, then they start doing, going to their idol worship again. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And then they will be crying and crying, Oh God, but you didn't give us food. Mm -hmm. Then you give them food. He said, like, yeah, yeah, but you give us food. You, give us, you didn't give us meat. Mm -hmm. Now we are fed up with garlic. We are, we are, we are fed up with this manna. Give us something better something to chew we want to mm -hmm. break the bones mm -hmm. you know they, so they, you know it's just like a, a, a child you know who's spot in the home yeah. and they, they will, you put the food and the veggies there and they want hamburgers they want mm -hmm. the like, fried chickens you know mm -hmm. they were spoiled children these mm -hmm. people who had a promise they had all the promise and the benefit of the mercies and goodness of god were also spoiled mm -hmm. God gave them a one-sided covenant. Mm. Yet they were never satisfied. You know, usually in the biblical times, I mean, covenant was enacted between two parties, right? Yeah. But the covenant of God for the for the children of, uh, of Abraham or mm. the children of Israel was a one-sided. God mm. covenanted with Himself mm. because these people would not they would not be able to abide by it. Yeah. So God covenanted with himself. And yet they were not satisfied. <laughs> the unfaithful people, they grumbled about everything. They were grumbling. He gave them laws. And they violated every single one of them. 
Mm -hmm. And they added to them as they will. You see, God gave them the laws, but they said, No, God, you should have added, let us add this one a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And they kept adding on to it, adding on to it. Only the problem was that the more they added to it, the more they broke it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more they added on to it, the more they broke it. Mm -hmm. But God tolerated them. Mm -hmm. Even God Himself said that they prostituted the worship of God. Mm -hmm. You know. They, 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 they just took everything for granted. You know, yeah. it's just like a small child who has a rich father. Mm -hmm. And because everything is, they have everything in their home. They mm -hmm. take everything for granted. They take it mm -hmm. and they put it everywhere. Mm -hmm. They misuse it. And mm -hmm. that was what the children of Israel were also doing. Mm -hmm. They prostituted the worship, the worship of God. They said, oh, for, for every, every worship is worship. So mm -hmm. on the same hill, that people were the Canaanites were worshiping the Baals. They also set up their temple, their, their, their erected their, their, their altars there, and they wanted to burn sacrifices for God. Mm -hmm. They would sacrifice on this altar for God, mm -hmm. and they would sacrifice for Baal on the same altar. All sacrifice mm -hmm. be sacrificed. That's what they would say. <laughs> you see, oh, God, I mean, I... they prostituted the worship of God. Mm -hmm. God took them like a husband, a wife, and a husband, and yet they prostituted. Mm -hmm. He delivered them from their enemies. He fought their battles for them. And yet, they were never satisfied. Mm -hmm. They were always complaining. You know, the Bible says that their leaders were corrupt. Talk about corruption now. Mm -hmm. Corruption began then, from them. <laughs> he said that their, their judges took bribes. Now you say judges take bribes in Ghana? Mm -hmm. In those days, they are, God says the Bible says that their judges took bribes. They are mm. prophets prophesied for lies. They prophesied lies for cash. Go to mm -hmm. Ghana, you find them there now. And you think it is only Ghana now. It started a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You see, it says they are priests. They practice sorcery. Mm. They practice witchcraft. Hmm. I mean, what what else can you be can you can you be said of these people by the mm. word of faithful? They were unfaithful. Mm. So Paul is saying here that you know, look at all this. The people who were barbarians, they were not qualified. But yeah. you who were qualified, look at what you were doing. Mm. Yes, sir. So in the in the sight of God, in the end, the undeserving and the unfaithful people, they all needed the grace of God to work mm. on their heart to be saved. Mm. They did it because it was their heart that was doing all these things. Mm. The heart of the of the of the, of, of the undeserving person was to the world, mm. and, the, and the heart of the of, of the unfaithful Jew was to themselves. Selfishness, mm. yeah. selfishness, was what it was for them. Mm. You know, but God, in condemning or, or rebuking Israel. Through the, through the prophet Ezekiel gave them a picture of how he got, got, them, uh, got them out of where they were and mm. yet they were unfaithful. Yeah. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter number 16. And uh, if you would, Isaac, read for me from number 4 to 6. Ezekiel chapter 16. And God was painting a picture of yeah, verse 4 to uh, 6. Verse 4 to 6. And I read. On the day you were yeah. born, on the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean. Nor were you robed with salt or wrapped in clothes. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field. For on the day you were born, you were despised. Amen. Amen. This is a picture portraying an aborted fetus. Mm. And God is saying here through the prophet Ezekiel to the children of Israel. 
And he's saying that, look, on the day that you were born, this is how, describe it, how it gets like an aborted fetus in the roadside somewhere. We can yeah. call still attached with all the slime and the bloody, the bloodiness on that, on that fetus. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, yeah, look, I, this is how I found you. You were mm. such a mess, dying, gasping for, gra gra for your last breath of air. But when I found you, I did mm. not pass by. I took hold of you. I pitied you. I cared for you. You were unwanted. You were dumbed. That is, that is what a fetus, an aborted fetus does. Mm. It is dumbed. It is unwanted. So it is dumbed. And God is saying, look, you were dumbed. The devil used you. He manipulated you. He used mm -hmm. you in all kinds of ways. Abused mm -hmm. you, misused you, and then cast you away. Mm -hmm. But I found you, and I showed you love. I loved you. I cared for you. I took interest in you when people did not care for you. Mm. You see, my friends, if you are listening to me, <laughs> that is a, a starking picture of you and I before God saw us. Mm. So the one Paul says that while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. That's what he means. Mm. Painting a picture of who we are, how God found us. He said, I came by and saw you there, helpless, mm -hmm. kicking mm -hmm. about in your own blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you lay there, I said, leave. Mm. And I help you to thrive like a plant in the field. Mm. You no, know, God brought them all up, and now they mm. are being unfaithful. They are mm. being unfaithful. That is why Paul said that the undeserving people and the deserving, the deserving but unfaithful people, they've mm. all fallen short of the glory of God, and their wages is death. Death. And mm. God only because of out of his love is going out of his way to prepare us so that he can he can he can save us mm. through Jesus Christ. You see, in all of this, we see the hand of God. Mm. Now, if we can if we translate it fast forward to now in this our generation, yeah. what we see. Maybe we are not seeing the barbarian and then the Jews anymore. Mm -hmm. But we are still seeing the, the deserving and the unfaithful mm -hmm. people. Yeah. You see, the, undeser the, 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 the undeserving people, we see them as the people who are ungodly, people who are not saved. Mm -hmm. People who refuse the, the atheists, yeah. the, the, the other religious people who, who, who don't have faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who, who sees the world as, they, uh, 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 as something that they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. These are the undeserving people. They are not deserving of the goodness of God. But yet God says that he's going out of his way and then helping them. Mm. Then we have the, 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 the deserving people mm -hmm. but the un, mm -hmm. unfaithful. And mm -hmm. those are the Christians. Mm -hmm. Look around and then we find that the, the, the deserving people who, who we, 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 we can say they are the, the unfaithful people mm -hmm. are the so-called born-again people now. Mm -hmm. Look around and you see that, I mean, because God loves them, because mm -hmm. God promises are for them, because God mm -hmm. promised to heal them and to protect them, they go about mm -hmm. doing whatever they want. You see, that lies the problem when they say that grace, 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 you can do whatever you want because mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace, so I can do whatever I want. Mm. Because once saved, always saved. I'm, yeah. all, I'm, I'm bound for heaven already, so I can mm -hmm. do whatever I want. That is the same thing that the children of Israel, the unfaithful people, were doing because God has already saved them from their from captivity from yeah. uh, 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 Egypt mm -hmm. and has given them a land. He mm -hmm. has He has fought their battles for them. The mm -hmm. land was theirs. The <laughs> land flowing with milk and honey was theirs. He promised even to bring them all back again, even after they sinned. So he said, "Why? What? What do we have to do? What incentives we have? We can do whatever I want because God, He loves us. It doesn't matter what we do; He will bring us back." Mm -hmm. And this is the unfortunate situation that the, the, the believers, the Christians, we are facing now. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the 
get the grace of God, people go to the extreme and do all kinds of things, assuming that because of the grace of God, God mm -hmm. is tolerable to everything. <laughs> God would God would tolerate it, you know. Yeah, put your hand on the on the, on, 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 on the stove and to burn you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, there is there is always consequences for your actions. Mm -hmm. yes. There will always be consequences for your actions, irrespective of God's grace. Yeah. God's grace is there, but there are consequences for your actions. Mm. Now the believer is is, is is being is being is walking around and and then and then and then and then with chest up pumping up just like the unfaithful people the Jews did. Mm. So now we can still say that both the Christian and then the, the, the unbeliever in the world now each and every day we need the grace of God. Grace, mercy. We need the grace of God to live every mm. single day mm. because uh, yet. Yes, all have sinned mm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. This is, this is the situation that we find ourselves in, brothers. If you are mm. hearing me today, if you are listening to us today, you know, know this, that you may be undeserving, but there is a way for you. Mm. There, there, there may be, there, there may be a, 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 I mean, a, a way for you. There's always God's grace that yeah. is abundant for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, can, you, you, you can come here as if you want, if you have something to say, because our, we, we, we have a, a few minutes. I want us to use that time to, to discuss. Mm. Yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's amazing the way, you know, God paints the picture for us to see throughout um, scriptures, to see not only ourselves, but to see his heart and the life he, he intended for us to live. And even as you, you, are, you are just talking about the, the picture of the unde undeserving, then as it was um, to the the pagans, the barbarians, the the Greeks and the um and the Romans, and the on this um the deserving but faithful people being the Jews, and now when it comes to our time, we can see the same picture: the undeserving being the unbelievers who are not in Christ and the deserving but still unfaithful being the Christians. And we, we, we see as you, you, you draw the picture for us to see that even back then in the life of the deserving but the unfaithful being the, the Jew people or the Jewish nation, we, 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 we see through scriptures that whenever they, um, they fall from grace or they, 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 they took the grace of God for granted and do whatever they like to do, we see the consequences. Going to Ezra, um, being in their own land by being ruled by other states and everything that they, they went through. And therefore, if that's the picture for us as believers or as the body of Christ now, then it calls for us to, to as, as the scripture has urged us, to, to be alert and to be watchful and to examine ourselves properly as to the way we are responding to God's grace or his love. Because as we, we, we always um, ask the question when we talk about the grace of God, as it was asked when Paul talks about the grace of God. And as you are talking about the grace of God, that will be the question. If God is so merciful and so gracious, so loving that 
even for the deserving yet unfaithful people, he picked them by his grace. It wasn't because they were righteous that he formed them as the nation of Israel. It was out of his grace. He picked them and by grace, he led them through all. And yet they did a whole lot of things which did not bring honor and glory to his name. Therefore, when it comes to us, the same question will be asked by other people. So if God is so loving and kind and merciful this way, then we can do whatever we, 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 we can with our life. And God will still be gracious and be merciful to us and be good unto us. And, and therefore, if we see throughout the life of the nation of Israel that, as you said, there were consequences for their unfaithfulness, them not understanding the grace, the love that God has been showering on them, for them to live in harmony and in obedience to his direction, then we also need to, um, I think, sit back. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. We need to also be still and think about this truth that through the Holy Spirit you are giving unto us as a body of Christ, that we will examine our life in terms of our life in response to the grace that has been extended towards us, that we might live our life to bring glory unto God and for the advancement of his great kingdom. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Isaac. I don't know, there is uh, uh, Brother uh, Emmanuel want to uh, add something to us? Uh, yeah, uh, the letter I want to add to it is, uh, I believe uh, he, this paints a, a, a good picture of uh, the, the intent of God, the mind of God, uh, also to us who have come to believe and to those who have not yet believed. You see, uh, going through all these, you, you see in verse uh, chapter 2, he tells us that for there is no partiality with God. You see, mm -hmm. he's the God of the Gentiles on, on, uh, of the uh, of the Jews as well. That's why I always love John 2, says, for God so loved the world. The world includes both uh, the, Christ, the unbelievers and the believers as well. So he died for all that all may come to know him. And that exonerates God from people. I know people, I hear people say, God is uh, a partial God. If God loves us, why did he choose just the Jews? And then he didn't choose we, the Gentiles. But we see through the scriptures, as our father is breaking it down, that he's, he, he's working up the ladder to 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 pour what he has in his heart out to his people hallelujah yeah. so he, he said for as many that have sinned when look at chapter 2 verse 12 he said for as many have sinned without the law will also mm -hmm. perish without law and as many that have sinned in the law will be judged by the law so mm -hmm. in, in in accordance to uh, who uh, how he brings out the people you are judged by the same way that you are you came but through christ jesus we know that he has brought all of us a and made all the first one and we see this in uh when jesus christ met the samaritan woman at the well and the samaritan woman asked the question he said you you i perceive you're a prophet and you you just say that we worship at this mountain but our forefathers worship at this mountain you said we should worship in jerusalem and jesus christ said yes but a time is coming that the true worshipers you see we will worship god in spirit and in truth so also nullifying the point that god is uh, also a uh, 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 stamping authority on what uh, paul is saying uh, here as well like you see, it's not about the Jews, it's not about the Gentiles. You see, mm -hmm. it's, it's about God's love for all, that mm -hmm. uh, uh, all may be brought to him, to him, in equality, as he's saying that there's no partiality in him. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's a picture being played out to us, being portrayed to us, who have come to believe, to see that God is, is not a partial person. You see, mm -hmm. he is a God of all. So anyone that comes to him, that's why anyone that comes to him must believe that he is. And mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, not you as a respect, uh, not as a person of being a Jew or being a Gentile or being uh, of a, a kind of race or coming from mm -hmm. a kind of background. No, mm -hmm. he's a respect 
character of all persons. So I believe uh, this this picture explains a lot of the intent of God towards His people and the love He shows to us. Amen. Amen. And so also on that on that point, we we also see that the the beginning of His forming of the nation did not um, necessarily or completely justify the end. Because the end that he was turning to is not the, the beginning that he has started. Because when we, we read um, Genesis chapter 12, the promise that was made to Abraham, he, he said, I will make, I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And so, although he has picked somebody or a nation, the end is for through that person and the nation, blessing coming to other people as well, or other nations as well. And so, for, for the unbeliever who is listening to us, or for the person who thinks that God shows favoritism or is partial, you, you, you shouldn't think and believe that. The main important thing is to allow your heart to be open to this great gospel of Jesus Christ. This love of God. Because whether he picked a nation and he didn't pick another nation, now he has canceled both. He said, there's now no more Jew or Gentile. Now, it's whosoever will believe in Jesus Christ. You see? And when we talk about predestination, as the Bible talks about it, it's not about God being partial or being favorite to other people. But predestination is God taught, knowing that whosoever will believe in Christ, will come to him through Christ, will be accepted. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Isaac, for elaborating uh, on that point. It's a believer. Since if you are watching us today, we are talking about the basis of God's grace to mankind, the basis of God's grace. Why, why was it necessary at all for God to show or to give us the grace to be saved? And we just went through it and then found out that there are some who were undeserving and those who were also deserving but they were unfaithful but both of them fell short of the of the righteous standing of god and as it is now as it was then it, it is now as mm -hmm. it was then they were all stood judged and condemned mm -hmm. uh, to die and mm -hmm. so is the world now that we live in yeah. you may be watching me today and you have not accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior you see mm -hmm. god shows his love that in this that while we were yet sinners, he, Christ died for us. It is, God's love extends to all, uh, to everybody. He, he, he provides a way. His mm -hmm. grace means that God providing a way for everyone to be, sin, uh, to be, to be saved. In mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, it says that when we, we were made alive, we were dead in trespasses and sin, in mm -hmm. which you were once walking according to the causes of the world. The way yeah. that you walk, it is it God provides the way. God mm -hmm. wants you to be saved, and He gives you the way. He works on your heart. Like this morning, mm -hmm. if you are listening to us, it is God working and or giving you a way out. Yeah. He's working on your heart and He's asking you, He's giving you an exit way so that you, mm -hmm. you will not be condemned. Yes. If this morning you heard it and you will accept it, I mm -hmm. want you to pray with us. I want you to come. Boldly confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm. and you also will be saved because mm. God shows no partiality. Yeah, whether the faithful or the unfaithful, He yeah. declared that all of us need the grace of God. Each yes. and every day that we live, we need the grace of God. Yes. God willing, we'll be continuing again next week. But for now, let me pass it over to Brother Ima to wrap it up for us as our time is up. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you for making yourself available to teach out of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Once again, we come to the end of today's episode of Desert Evangelism, The Road Less Travel. And I encourage you, don't miss out on this. It's very important. For you said, understanding, wisdom is a principal thing, but in all you're getting, you get understanding. And this forms the bedrock of our Christian lives and understanding it, it plays an important role in it. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, Go back to our YouTube page or come back to our Facebook page, Christ Uduma Church at uh, Toronto. you find this series. We started two weeks ago, the uh, Understanding Series. Hallelujah. Go back to it. Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Hearing it once is not enough. Go back to it. Give yourself to it. Study mm-hmm. through it and make sure that whatever is being said is being confirmed and you are being led by the Spirit of God to also get deeper understanding in and I believe there are more revelations to it than what you are hearing now. And I know it's all brought up by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So seek God with all your heart. Find him and he will show himself mighty to you. Yeah. Through the Jews, he showed himself to the Gentiles as well. And he has made that uh, uh, path available to you and I this moment in Christ Jesus that we all together will take takers of his kingdom. So God bless you for joining us and hopefully... We'll be seeing you next week, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Desert Evangelism, the road less travel. May the grace of God that surpasses all understanding rest with you and your family, protect you throughout the whole week and bring you back safely when we meet together. And if you don't have a place of worship, I encourage you to join us tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time on Christ Redeemer Church Toronto on our Facebook page as well. Join us. Let's worship God together in one accord and one spirit. We meet same time next week. Bye-bye. Have a lovely week. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.